Friends, welcome to Junicorn. <laughs> Steve's here today. Hi, everybody. We're gonna start with Steve. We're gonna start with me. Why? We're gonna get the ball rolling because I uh, I feel a little funny introducing Junicorn. Why? It's just a bit of a funny concept. It is a little funny. <laughs> Didn't want to do it by myself. Where does it basically. come from? I don't know. I did a full Instagram sweep and I couldn't find the originator of it. I did a Facebook search. I did a Google search. A YouTube search. If you guys know who started it, please let me know because I'd love to credit. Um, whoever had the whimsical idea. Yeah, I mean, I think it's super clever, kind of like... It's mermaid, mermaid, but for unicorns. Right, and then like Inktober, which is ink for October. Yeah. Just clever ways to, um, clever themings to inspire creativity. Is it a pun? A play on words? Or it has, that has to be something, like, it's different? No, I think it's, no, it's more not. of like an alliteration. It's wordplay. There's a word for that. Is it alliteration like. wordplay? No, you that's, Google it. that's like Monday Madness. It's like an M and an M. That's alliteration. That's right? alliteration. Okay. So put, come on, part... put put that English to use. I know, right? <laughs> come on, masters. <laughs> well, my masters isn't in English, but yes. Uh, true. Theater. It, it is a wordplay, I guess. Theater. Yeah, more theater. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, okay, so it's it's Junicorn. So we're doing unicorns for June. I did not commit to the month because we are just we're hot busy. off the heels of mermaid. Unicorn would probably be more, right? June, what? I guess it's June and Icorn versus Unicorn. I was thinking Junicorn. Oh, I have no idea where you're going with that. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> they, they get it. Um, no, I, look, when I say June Icorn, I've been so in The Handmaid's Tale that all I can see is one of those big old white bonnets on a unicorn. <laughs> <Off-red>. <laughs> Under his eye. Under his eye. And, uh, Blessed and be the fruit. Forest. <laughs> Blessed be the fruit. <laughs> I don't want to open discussion on Handmaid's Tale, but if any of you guys are watching it, you'll you'll know right why um, it freaks anyone out. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not go there. It's heavy. Watch it or don't watch it. I mean, it's one of those things that I would probably binge by myself on like a you know close the blinds kind of a day. A sick day. A sick day that I'm. I might, just, I might just take. Look, I, here's the thing. I do think it's very brilliant. I think it's, um, it's, I think it's great acting. I think it's great storytelling. I think the cinematography is fantastic. The mm. coloring is so interesting. And what is amazing to me is that this concept, um, it was from a novel in the 80s. It was actually so, done before. Yeah. The whole movie, right? Right. Um, but just but the initial novel it was done back in the in the eighties right right is when it came out so the fact that um, Margaret Atwood the author was um, already kind of seeing some of these uh, yeah totalitarian or <laughs> dystopian <laughs> future she was kind type of, a, of on the nose yeah is a little freaky but that's politics so my, we're not gonna go there yeah no we're never going there my my freaky thought is that nothing in that is 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 um, crazy not far true. Far. Right. It's so, actually all happened before. Yeah. Not all at once at the same time, but in different periods of history, all of that stuff was normal and was real. Or like even in like communist countries like North Korea. Or it still might be, yeah. Yeah. In some ways, shape or form. And uh, we'll leave you with that. Anyway, time back to magical <laughs> unicorns. Let's magical munico- unicorns? Unicorns. Um, <laughs> unicorn. <laughs> um, I'm just feeling my do you full like you, fantasy. Do, do you like unicorns? Yes. I like them for, for what they represent. What do they represent? Magic, fantasy, glamour, diamonds, cheese. Jimons, cheese. cheese. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> That's a bad inside joke that I yeah. couldn't even begin to explain. No, but... Um, but yeah, no, they, they represent a lot of fantastical things. And I, yeah. whilst I don't draw them often, um, I do appreciate them. You know why I don't draw them often? Because you don't like horses. Well, yeah, I'm not... I'm not... In, oh. I'm not equine inclined, <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, I am. I like this. I like this. I'll tell you this much. Um, the only horse kind of thing I could ever tell you is that when I was a preteen, I watched a show in Australia called The Saddle Club, which is like the pre-tween version of The Real Housewives of Melbourne. Um, <laughs> it's for kids. <laughs> uh, but the amount right. of drama in that show uh-huh. is insane. I actually tried to make you watch the opening credits. Do you remember the song? The theme song that you will never unhear? Um, I feel like I remember seeing you something You told me to get this. it off as soon as it started. Yeah, well then don't repeat it, yeah, please. No, but if you want to go and search the uh, the Saddle Club opening theme song, that to a, you know, if you want to go and put your ears through torture after this, 
Okay. You'll never unhear that song. Look, I like... That's the only horse thing I know, but I don't know, I don't like... I don't... It's not like I don't like horses, I actually just don't like drawing animals. Look, I actually, um, I like horses. Um, you know, one of my favorite horse movies, which I tried to get you into, was, um, Wild Hearts Can't Be Broken. Yeah, no. Which is, um, the story <laughs> of Sonora, Sonora Webster. And she, uh... I'll tell you this much, I watched it. Yeah, I loved it as a kid. I would watch it all the time. She was convinced. That that thing was like two minutes into the closing credits. He's still looking at me like, did you enjoy it? Did you enjoy it? I hadn't enjoyed one minute of it. It's so, because it's such, it's such a good, like, <laughs> I mean, she's so great. Like, I mean, you know, she kind of yeah, goes off to find her own adventure and then finds her calling in horse diving in like, you know, early 1900 or, or during, the, during the Great Depression and uh, <laughs> has a tragic accident, but then, you know, overcomes her tragedy and, you know, yeah. Here we go, Happy movie ever after. movie reviews with Steve. It's movie happening again. <laughs> I, I used to love it as a kid, and um, I was thought, how interesting would it be to go diving with horses? And how deep does the pool have to be? Isn't for it horse? not allowed? I feel like they stopped that because well, it's probably, animal cruelty or something. Maybe it's I don't know if it's cruelty, but yeah, it's yeah. I would guarantee it's probably not around anymore. Yeah, at all. I I haven't seen it. But also, I don't go looking for it, so I don't know. Um, no, I don't really love to draw animals, but I'm I'm more curious as to why you think unicorns are just horses. Have you met a unicorn? I have not met a unicorn, but I mean, they're obviously based on um, equine. Is that the word? Because I I just feel like I made that up. Equestrian. Equestrian. Something. Maybe equines. <laughs> It's feline, so I feel... The Some, other thing I know about are cats. So feline, equine, I'm going, it's, it's that. You that's know my somebody process. will correct us, and yeah. if not we'll, one, we'll get a whole list of them. I trust so. that the truth is out there yes. on the internet. Thank you. Thanks, internet. Yeah, thanks, thanks for everybody listening to this. I guess my theory is... I'm not my theory. I'm just gonna, um... I'm just gonna put this out there. I did a little test run where I printed my, uh, my, it's, so this is my Ruby Digi stamp from Etsy. It's, it's a deer. It's a deer. It's a right. reindeer, right? I took the antlers off. I printed it onto the paper so I could have a great starting point. I was cheating, if you will. Yes. <laughs> you were I, cheating. I really wanted to enjoy the project. So I, uh, I printed the deer. Unbeknownst to me, deer and horses are different things. Now, if I had spent half a minute thinking about it, I probably could have figured that out, but I didn't. No, and here I am. And Steve goes, oh, babe, uh, you know that um, horse, it's a unicorn's based off a horse. And I was like, yeah, obviously. And he goes, well, um, where's the tail and the mane? Guys, and I was because I had just had like a little deer tail on there. <laughs> the only thing I'd done is I like, added a horn. I took the antlers off and put a horn there, and I was like, "Ah, oh, fantastic! It's a unicorn." <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "What about the muzzle? You're not going to give it gear. You need to give it a muzzle." It's oh yeah, like, that's where I gave up because I think like Steve, honestly, literally, I could have added that muzzle on that digi stamp. And I asked him to do it. You did not do it. That is not true. You didn't ask. You said, "No, nah, it's fine." Well, it is fine, because <laughs> here's the thing, I have not, been, unlike my husband sitting over here, I have not been blessed by the presence of a real-life unicorn to really know whether they're more horse-like or deer-like, but I'm going with this hybrid deer unicorn. You know, for all we know, I think you're just, um, they could be based on corners. rabbits. They're not. Then you wouldn't even know. Here, let's go to the iPad Pro. No, I'm not going. We're going we're gonna to gonna... look up the history. Steve, stop. No, I don't want to do that. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I know that every other unicorn out there is horse-based. So yours is just so different. I'm just different. Okay. <laughs> I'm not like other girls. No. Look, I, I'm a cool mom. I'm a cool mom. Um, no, look, I, I do agree. Steve was onto something. He did hit the nail on the head with what everyone understands as a unicorn reference. We're going to have to live with this because this is what I did seven of them based off of. And I'm really proud of it, which, let's be honest, is the only thing that matters, right? Yeah, I mean, look, it's fine. I mean, purists... <laughs> Uh, we'll probably you won't find him here. But, but, but at the same time, it's like saying, you know, like watching Game of Thrones and being like, there's no way that the that the dragon was able to get there yeah. right in that amount of time. Right. And you're, you're like, literally correcting fantasy. Yeah, so yeah. It's like, it's magic. It's a stretch. But I, um, no, I'm, I'm going to just put this question out there because Steve said purists. Are there any JLB creative fans that are purists in any way, shape or form? Because... I think I would be really hard for you to watch. I, I, don't, I don't know if there's purists, <laughs> but I think there's level, different levels of quote-unquote perfectionism. Yeah. We've all got our own versions of beauty and aesthetic, right? I'm, I, to be honest, I am super happy with how all these turned out. Which is... They look beautiful. Nobody's going to discount it. And, if, and I think what is what, what kind of helps save it is that it is a fantastical, mythical creature that is based off of a horse, but... Mm, save it. 
That's fine. <laughs> Saved it, did it? <laughs> um, no, look, I had a great time. Steve was instrumental in making sure that they had manes and tails. You're welcome. <laughs> well, here's why. I think you one of them why? doesn't have a mane. I think I left it off just to be annoying. Uh, but here's the d- here's why. Okay, so as oh, a kid, oh, I know why. <laughs> I So this is all about you, basically. Well, it's about me for right now. <laughs> I loved My Little Ponies Same. as a kid. Like, and the original ones from, like, the 80s, you know, and mm-hmm. I was obsessed with them, and my friends from church, the um, all my, my, my girlfriends from church had them, and we'd all play with them, and I'd go to their houses, and we'd play... My Little Ponies, and I love such a guilty pleasure. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> Close the door so so nobody can see you. Play with Barbies and My Little Ponies. <laughs> Don't let anybody see you. I know the struggle. Yeah, but so I, I loved it, and I loved the ones that would um, their you could pull their their tail out like it would oh, grow, yeah. and then you would just like I crank the head patch like that. You crank the head, and the tail would go would would come back would wind yeah, up yeah. inside. And I just thought it was they were so beautiful, so elegant, <laughs> elegant, <laughs> elegant. <laughs> Oh, they're so pretty and like all their colors and I loved the little sparkle in their purple eyes. Oh yeah. And their hooves were so beautiful and full just fantasy. Full fantasy, full like rainbow hair with yeah. that, you know, yeah. unicorn or with the unicorn horn and, and, and the wings and I loved the ones that were fuzzy and they would smell like <laughs> like like strawberries. Did so. you um did you know? I think I've told you this before. I went in a coloring competition for My Little Pony, yes, and I always. didn't want my family to know that I had done that, uh-huh. which I don't know why, because I knew that they were pretty supportive of me doing coloring competitions, yeah, right. um, but I thought it would just be better if I took this one into my own hands, took this matter, <laughs> and uh, I put the address for my prize, if I won, if I was so lucky, uh-huh. um, as my school address, my primary school address. So how old were you? Uh, like eight? Like eight. Eight or nine. <laughs> and I won and they sent my little prize package to school, to my primary school, and I got called into the principal's office, well, to the office, uh-huh. and uh, and had to pick up my little my, my little pony prize pack. What was it? Just like a place? It was a little box of like, of like the latest My Little Pony toys. And so I looked... They weren't miniature little ponies. It was like real size. Yeah, they were like the, the toys. How many? Like a like a little box. It was a little box worth of toys. But how many ponies? I couldn't tell you. All I know is that when I was carrying that prize back to class, I felt like the king of the school. <laughs> and no one was about to know what hit them when I got back to class and unboxed everything. Me doing an unboxing at eight. <laughs> I am so jealous right now. Do you know I also won the Saturday Disney color uh, uh, letter of the week, which was like a huge thing yeah, in the country. Yeah, I remember. I knew that you won some of those. I entered that all the time and then I thought once I was like you know what I've got to put in such a great amount of effort because I kept seeing that the people that were winning were doing the absolute very most right and I hadn't started doing that in my life just then uh-huh. so I did it I, I made a whole thing it was like a, a lot yeah too much to be sending in to be honest and they sent in they sent me back a rejection letter because apparently they send you a rejection letter every single time but I would keep sending things in because with the rejection letter they'd send you stickers so I was like, oh, well, at the very least, I'm going to get some new stickers, right. which is great for me. Because you're obsessed. Love stickers. So I am uh, I sent it back in, but I did so much. And I was kind of devastated. We were on a family holiday. Ironically, that my auntie won from a, sending in a magazine clipping. We were in um, Queensland, and my mum gets a phone call, and they're like, oh, your son won the uh, Saturday Disney Letter of the Week. And I was ecstatic. Like, you could not <laughs> calm me down. Because I remember seeing what the prize pack was that week. And I was like, yes, I got all these Barbies, all these things, like oh, it's gonna I be remember. amazing. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and they said, well, it'll be on in six weeks, so get him to watch it then. And you know, this is back, I didn't really think people had mobile phones back then right. or anything, um, or certainly my family didn't. And so I'm just like, I'm waiting for this episode to come on. The episode comes on, I hadn't actually received the prize pack yet, and I see what the prize pack was. No, no, I had received it, but I, it just reiterated how upsetting it was. When I got it, it was all the boy toys. It was robots, it was, like a, a like rock'em sock'em robots. It was these um, little flying things, remote control cars. I was furious. Two large boxes of boy toys, and no. I was expecting the full Barbie fantasy. No. It was devastating. They even like cut back on the art supplies in the boys ones because you'd get like all these textures and pencils yeah, you, and crayons. Yeah, and I guarantee it's because you're a boy. Well, yeah, they saw James written and on so the thing they, and they were they like, assumed. oh, he doesn't want all this stuff. And I was, no, they assumed wrong. 
<laughs> I was, well, I mean, I wasn't devastated. I wasn't spoiled. I wasn't ungrateful. I was very grateful. I ended up giving all of the presents to my brother and uh, dishing sure them out between it. my cousins as well. Um, I don't. I gave them ways that Christmas presents. Well, I mean, and that's stuff. nice that other people were blessed because of it. Yeah, I'm just is... kind of devastated that I didn't get all the Barbies that I thought I was going to get. Yeah, well, that's the kind of that. Isn't that interesting? Because you can never. You just never know, right? No, you never know. But you have to be happy about it either way. And what I was truly happy was. That um, I, that was a very valuable lesson in my life that I learned. Oh, if you really want to do something, you have to put in a lot of effort to yeah, be recognized. Sure. That Definitely. was the first time I feel like I ever really saw that, because it wasn't until I did everything, everything I knew I could, could do to, right, that, that I got rewarded that yeah, way. Yeah, 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 for sure. For sure. It's really interesting. Well, I just also think that it's interesting how stereotypes happen. <laughs> I'm so on the fact that they say you boy oh, toys. Oh, throw that out there, Steve. <laughs> I don't know, you know, like... I, I should have been more specific. You know, when I... I mean, this is kind of a little bit of a tangent, but um, when I was in college, I was... A, I'm a so... I am, I guess. Yeah, I got my major... I majored in sociology, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. In my yeah. undergrad. And so, one of my courses, we had to go to... Um, we had to write a paper on gender norms, stereotypes, all that stuff. Oh, really? Yeah, and we had to go to... Um, it was like sociology of children, I think, and so we had to go to um, a toy store and see how we, how we um, stereotype mm. gender norms from a very young it's age. Big in there, yeah. And um, I remember going to um, South Coast to the oh, toy yeah? store that they used to have in there, and you could you literally go from like you know, like one section to the next. So if I started in the boy section, you'd see all of like the surrounding wall was like primary color, or the all the toys were basically primary colors, and the wall was like white. And then as you go towards, I guess, the girl section, if you will, you see the wall paint literally like ombre into a pink. Oh, yeah. Into like, a, and then all, everything is pastel on that side. Yeah. Which is so, you know, I mean, like... Oh, I watched a documentary on that, actually, yeah. where they were saying a lot of the toys, even today, that are still marketed, um, if they're like science-based, they're mm -hmm. marketed towards boys, um, or they'll be in the boys section of the toy store. If there, um, there was this one, it's the same company put out two versions of kids' computers. Uh -huh. So they teach you like spelling yeah, right, and, right, you yeah. know, whatever. Numbers. Grammar, yeah, numbers, math. Grammar, like, not grandma. Like grandma, but grammar. Oh, oh. I thought you were correcting me. No, that's no. just the English translation <laughs> from my English. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> they teach you about your grandmas. Um, no, they, so they, there was a boy version and a girl version, very stereotypical. One was like high tech boys, like Mission Impossible right. style. Because, uh, you know, seven-year-olds are apparently cracking into right. the Louvre. <laughs> but the um, the girl one was all like flowers and daisies and like, type your secrets in here. <laughs> like, essentially a little computerized burn book for eight-year-olds. Right. And I'm gagging because I thought, you know, me would uh, have been fighting yeah. for that girl one. Right, right. Like, nil interest in the boy one. Um, but they were saying it's it's not just a bad thing that way. It's that they're actually they put less functions in the girl one as well what? So they wouldn't take the learning to the same level that the boys did like they wouldn't get as much math as the boy one had They wouldn't be as numbers focused. It'd be more like like tell me how your day was It's literally <laughs> like going back to Handmaid's Tale Yeah, how, right. How, oh like, full circle conversation how, here <laughs> how, And then the latest episode She's not allowed to read. She's not allowed to read when she goes to visit like Canada, yeah. and they hand her like her her her, her itinerary her, in pictures. In pictures, it's like hieroglyphics. Oh, come on, Cleopatra. <laughs> but so it's just crazy. I mean, it, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it is just very interesting, and not that we want to get into all of that here, but it is just very interesting. Well, let's get we... into it a little bit because I think it's funny that as I'm looking at the screen, I have chosen a very stereotypically. Feminine but, color palette. But what's, but what's considered feminine? Oh, I said stereotypical. Right. Yeah. Oh, and oh, so going on that, um, I saw a thing like on a Facebook video, I think it was, uh, which I don't know how true this is, but I'm sure there's some. <laughs> well, it's some Facebook videos so, are probably true. Right. <laughs> but they talked about how um, blue is for boys, girl, uh, pink is for girls, mm -hmm. and how that um, is actually something that is more recent in the last like 30 years. Probably, because and, that's when marketing became about... Right, and that actually, I guess, originally, it was flipped somewhere back in, you know, prior to 30 years ago, if they used colors to describe gender, or, or somewhere in this. I'm probably wrong, so don't quote me on this, but I thought it was interesting that that it wasn't blue is for boys, pink is for girls. I think it was the opposite. To, well, I don't know if it was the opposite, but to be fair, when in black and white times would you be seeing an ad in pink or blue? Right. 
<laughs> just see white. You're like, oh no, I know that tone of gray means pink. <laughs> well, and even it's like you look at um, like the movie The Great Gatsby, Catherine Martin, the costume designer, who's the wife of Baz Luhrmann, who's my favorite. Catherine and Barry Luhrmann. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but she, um, she designed, uh, she, she partnered with Brooks Brothers and designed Gats- one of Gatsby's suits as um, a pink pastel with white pinstripes mm. because that was a, co- a color of the time that would typically be worn by somebody of wealth. A male of wealth. Yeah, I mean, look, even you go back through the times and it was considered, you know, being over, well, what we would term now as overweight was a sign of wealth. Or and the color purple. The color purple is for royals and, yeah. Look what God has done. The color purple. <laughs> 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 well, I mean, you know, and also these things that were um, for wealth, even if you were, like, if you're an artist and you produced paintings with, um, with certain colors, like, certain colors were very, very hard to make back in the day because the pigments weren't right, just readily minerals, available. Right, so, right, yeah. you know, if anything with, like, a really vibrant blue was considered very luxurious. Um, or, like, a purple, yeah. per se, because even now, to this day, I mean, how many beauty gurus go on and say, like, oh, the formulation for the purple's really difficult. It's a really difficult well, pigment to work with. Was it, like, based on... No, jade is green, right? Jade? Yeah. I think it's green. What's the blue one? Am I wrong Amethyst? with blue? That's purple. The blue one, sapphire. Yeah, maybe. The heart of the ocean. <laughs> it's been eighty-four <laughs> years. I thought the old lady dropped <laughs> it in the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, okay. So we got off onto twenty-five different tangents there. My my thing about like plot the references, guys. <laughs> oh wow, we uh, you just went on a journey. Yeah. The um my thing about the toys. First of all, you could shove blue in my face, it wasn't going to stop me from wanting a Barbie doll. That's just fact. That's my truth. That was my life. Yeah, colors are colors. Yeah, and I wanted what I wanted, but a lot of the time, apparently, um, children, you know, babies in particular, Uh are attracted to baby dolls because, first of all, it's like kind of their size. Usually they're softer, but the big eyes, apparently, is something that's very attractive to babies. I've heard this somewhere. Isn't it attractive to, like... Everybody, like, there's something with proportion of the faces that it, like, literally does yeah. some chemical thing in our brain that makes us go, Aww. Well, why do we say people with, like, big doe eyes? Like, a doe, doe eyes. That's, like, soft and, like, yeah. full and, like, it's cute. I always say someone with beady eyes. <laughs> someone <laughs> sultana <laughs> eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Looking like a raisin. I know. Like, no. So, yeah, there is something about the big eye thing. Sorry to anyone with small eyes out there. I, um, I'd say I have, like, a small to natural eye. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, I don't know. There's something psychological about it that is ingrained in us from birth. Personally, my, uh, my, the thing that was ingrained in me was, you know, I was to recognize that red was my color because I'm a twin. You're a twin. And it was just a, you know, differentiator between us. Caleb wore blue, I wore red. I guess it's easy. Well, we weren't identical, so it was kind of weird too, but I guess- My brothers are identical and it was literally like, okay, buy one in one color, buy one. Well, like one was Mickey Mouse, the other one was Donald Duck. Like, it was, like, for the my, shirts. <laughs> my, um, my brother got to be Bugs. Like, Bugs Bunny. Oh, were you Daffy Duck? Daffy Duck. Or Porky Pig. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Deal with the psychological trauma oh of that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, no, it was fine. I was just super jealous because we had a birthday in McDonald's once and I threw a big old tanty because I had a Donald, a Daffy Duck cake. And Caleb got a Bugs Bunny one. He's all smiley, happy, and I'm frowning with my cake. Yeah. Such a little brat. <laughs> Should have just been happy that I got to eat cake at McDonald's. All right, literally. <laughs> had a dream right now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I, I guess we had a million other things to talk about today, but we could probably get to them another time. I think we've done a great job just introing Unicorn. <laughs> yes. Oh, and you know, this is what I say about Unicorn. Um, uh, I was m- messaging my mentor we were like email or messaging back and forth and um, I was really proud of something she did. She spoke for a course and I was like, I'm super proud of you. And she was like, thank you so much. And then we were kind of going on to it and she's like, you know, I just have to remember, you know, that I'm, I'm a unicorn. And I thought it was really cool for her to say that because it was like, oh, like empowering for her to be like, I just have to remember like I'm a unicorn, that I bring a lot to the table, that I am powerful, that I am valid, that I am special and that I am mystical and interesting and I thought that was a really kind of cool way to um just a cool a cool description for herself to be like I'm a unicorn yeah I thought it was really kind of perfect so um when you think so go be a unicorn yeah, go today be a everyone. unicorn yeah <laughs> and we'll, you know yeah we'll be around and we'll be here for your uh, for your unicorn week yeah which I might add I'm going to really confuse everyone here I'm doing it every other day technically it's unicorn fortnight 
It just doesn't quite have the same ring to it. So, um, for all intents and purposes, welcome to Junicorn Week. Amid, amid Summer Fortnite's Junicorn. <laughs> Junicorn. <laughs> um, we're going to leave it at that. Thank you for joining us. Steve will be back for some more chats throughout Ooh. Junicorn Week. And um, I can't wait to bring you the rest. I'll leave you with my thoughts for today. Glitter. Steve, your thought for today? Fantasy. <laughs> Um, go and have fun today and, um, yeah, thanks for joining us. Thanks. Bye everybody. Bye.